So what does a day in the life of a copywriter look like? Well, no two days are the exact same, and if you asked me that question in 2019, before the global pandemic, my answer would be wildly different than it is today. So welcome to the first edition of my new series where I'll give you an insider look at my life behind the scenes. Come along with me as I share a day in the life of a copywriter, pandemic edition. <laughs> What's up? It's Alex. Since starting my channel a whole 73 episodes ago, I have received so many questions from my global community wondering what goes on behind the scenes here at the Copy Posse. So today I'm giving you a sneak peek at what a regular workday looks like while I run my copywriting agency and academy. But this video comes with a big fat disclaimer. While my days would usually differ throughout the week, ever since the pandemic hit, my life has gotten a lot more consistent and a lot less, well, glamorous. Thanks to restricted travel, canceled masterminds and temporary closures of my favorite cafes and working spaces. But aside from a drastically toned down travel schedule, I am so grateful that it's basically been business as usual in my world. And I've been able to use this time to continue to scale my business, grow my team, get new clients, and coach and mentor hundreds of amazing, inspiring students from around the world in my copywriter coaching programs. Now, if you are ready to face this challenging time head on, my channel is full of tutorials and guides on copywriting, marketing, and branding tips that are working today. So go ahead Ahead and join the posse by subscribing to my channel below and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when my next video goes live. In just minutes you'll be well on your way to igniting your business this year. Yes, even in the middle of a global pandemic. And I'm about to give you a taste of what that could look like for you, so here it is, a day in the life of a copywriter, the pandemic edition. Some of you might be surprised by this, but I wake up pretty early for someone who sets their own hours. On most days I am up by 7am unless Tater, my puppy, wakes me up even earlier than that which I'm being honest is probably most days. <laughs> So after heading downstairs and feeding Tater, I make myself an oat milk latte. I love getting up early before the noise of the world starts up, but this doesn't mean that I rush right into my to-do list. I love, love, love to ease into my mornings. After making coffee, my partner Jackson and I usually spend about 30 minutes or so on the back patio before he heads off to his studio for the day. We try to do this every single morning as a way to connect and start the day with some quality time. As a rule of thumb, we set our phones aside so that we can be as present as possible. I try to work out a few times a week and I personally prefer to do this in the morning because it's a great way to get energized before I tackle the day. I am not someone who can exercise in the evening. If I don't move my body in the morning, there is no chance in hell of it happening later, despite my best intentions. Before social distancing, I'd work out with a personal trainer at the gym or maybe go to a workout class like Orange Theory or a spin class. But these days I do my workouts virtually via a video call with my trainer or I do my own routine in the back park behind my house. If you are someone who mostly works from home, movement is definitely something I encourage you to keep up. If I even go a few days without exercise, I get irritable, achy, and have a hard time focusing and being productive. So after my workout, I hop online around 9 a.m. I try to never get online earlier than that because guys, boundaries are so, so important when you're working for yourself and especially when you're working from home. Mornings are when I'm the most creative, so I tend to save them for writing or creating content. For this reason, I prefer not to schedule any client calls until the afternoon unless I have a call with my team or training with my students who live all over the world. But before I get into writing zone, I'll spend about 30 minutes or so checking my emails and responding to any messages that need urgent attention. If the email takes longer than a couple of minutes to respond to though, I mark them as important and return to them in the afternoon. I am a huge fan of inbox zero, or at least inbox very little. I like to keep my inbox extremely organized. Okay, now it is time to write. In the past, I'd often go write from my favorite cafe just so that I could get out of the house and have a change of scenery to get inspired. That option is obviously not as available to me right now, so lately I've been doing all of my writing from home. And guilty admission, it is pretty normal for me to stay in my workout clothes until about noon. <laughs> See, I told you it's not glamorous. But I always, always change and get ready for the day at some point. I swear I never stay in my sweatpants all day, ever. <laughs> now, while I do have a home office, I still love to switch things up and write from different parts of the house so I'm not glued to the same seat for hours. Changing up my environment really helps me keep those creative juices flowing. So once all my creative tasks are completed, I like to break up my day by heading out for a walk with Tater. This is usually when I run any errands and head to the grocery store to grab stuff for lunch and dinner. Now, a little known fact about me, I love, love, love to buy fresh flowers. You'll almost always find multiple bouquets of fresh cut flowers around my house. 
Once I grab groceries, I head back home and cook up a healthy lunch. Now, I try to eat a lot of green, healthy foods to keep my brain sharp and avoid that afternoon crash. During my lunch is usually when I have a quick check-in with my team, scan through social media, and respond to all of your comments. So don't forget to say hi in the comment section below so I can hear from you. After a morning of immersing myself in writing, it is time to switch hats from creativity to communications. My afternoon is when I schedule copy reviews, strategy sessions, and meetings with clients. In between calls, I'll do some administrative work and other business-related tasks, such as sending invoices, replying to emails, and planning social media content. This is also when I'll do any copy editing or critiquing, any of those left-brain copywriting tasks that require more critical thinking than creativity. Now, when you're a freelancer on retainer with regular clients, chances are there'll be weekly standing meetings that you're expected to be a part of. I try to have all my standing calls with these clients on Tuesday afternoon. Pre-pandemic, I used to travel often, and having a standard day and time block for these meetings made it really easy for me to stay productive and consistent despite the time zone differences. I like to save my Mondays for strategic planning of my week and catching up on work left over from the week before. Wednesdays are when I upload my videos for the week and Thursday afternoons like today are when you'll find me right here in the studio recording video content. And given my current lame social life, this is usually the only day of the week when I actually put on makeup and do my hair. So after my last call of the day, I spend about an hour doing client follow-up and responding to any emails that have trickled into my inbox. 6 p.m. is my ideal cutoff time to end work, although there are some days that I finish later depending on the project I'm working on. But I try to stick to very consistent work hours every day to maintain a routine and stay productive. And after my partner Jackson returns home from his studio, we cook dinner. So pre-pandemic, you'd often find us out at fabulous local restaurants and cocktail bars, but at the moment that rarely happens. Right now, like everybody else, we are cooking dinner at home. And to be honest, I actually kind of love it. We always cook dinner together. We'll put on some music, make a cocktail, and chat about our days as we cook up a feast. Italian is our favorite. After dinner, it's time to take Tater out for a long walk. We'll head to the beach or the dog park or just stroll around the neighborhood as the sun starts to set. If I absolutely have to work in the evening, it's because there's likely some urgent deadline or troubleshooting that needs to be done. Because let's be real, when you work for yourself, anything can happen and you need to be ready to put out fires at any moment. But as a personal rule, I won't return to my office to do this work because it can be far too easy to get swept up and the next thing you know, hours and hours have gone by. Instead, I'll work from the kitchen. For some reason, I get last minute evening tasks done way faster there. All right guys, I know this is not exciting, but I am usually in bed and asleep by 10. 30. I know that some of you might be night owls, but I am most definitely not. I love to get my beauty sleep and my favorite time of day is climbing into bed, ready to fall asleep and conquer another day. But hey, I do break the rules from time to time and have a lot of fun whenever I'm traveling, attending networking events, hanging out with my friends, or hosting my Flight Club Mastermind. But I will save that for a future edition of A Day in the Life of a Copywriter. And I have to say guys, despite all the chaos and all these restrictions, having more time at home and in my office has given me the opportunity to establish a healthier routine and manage my schedule more consistently. I'm not saying I always want it to be this way, obviously not, but I've been able to make the most out of this crazy time and put more energy into pivoting and growing my business so that the copy posse comes out of this pandemic fiercer than ever. Now, I wanna do a real quick bonus Q&A round for those of you who have sent in specific questions about how I run my freelance copywriting business from home. Alex, now that you're running a copywriting agency and have launched programs, how much time do you actually spend writing? Great question. So I would say I spend about 50% of my time actually writing, whether it be for my clients or for my own business. I used to spend the bulk of my time writing, but now that I have a team, I have more help with the copywriting stuff so that I can spend more time on content creation, business development and strategies for growth. Next question, what do you do to take breaks? All right, so during the summer, I like to go outside for a quick walk or I'll run an errand. I don't often time my breaks. You know how some people will take like a five minute break every hour. I like to do one task in one sitting. So I'll just sit down, finish the task. And then after I'm done, I'll go do something to take a break, like make a coffee or go for a walk. And if the sales task is really heavy, like a sales page, I'll break it down into multiple steps so that I'm not continuously writing for hours on end. Obviously you couldn't write a sales page from start to finish finish in one sitting. All right, next question. How do you coordinate client meetings to manage time? So this is a really, really good question because when I first started my consulting and copywriting business, I found that I would only schedule calls on the hour every hour. So then I would have all this dead space in between my calls, which wasn't enough time to get anything done, but it would really eat into my productivity for the day. So unless it's a branding session or a strategy session with a client, which can often take one to two hours, I keep calls to 30 minutes or less. This allows me to schedule more calls in the same amount of time 
time and then I have way more time to complete my other tasks. So my rule of thumb is this, unless someone is actually paying for the call, I keep it to half an hour or less. Now you might think that doing longer calls actually provides more value to potential clients, but honestly that's not necessarily the case because when you have longer calls, you risk over delivering to the point that you have nothing left on the table. So keep your discovery calls useful but incomplete, 30 minutes tops. All right, next question. How do you keep yourself focused while writing? That is a great question. So like I mentioned earlier, I block off writing time in the morning and I do all of my creative work in that time. I have a dedicated playlist on Spotify that I listen to that really helps me get into the zone. And if you wanna get your hands on that playlist link and learn my other tips and tricks for working from home, you can watch that video next right here. So there you have it guys. That is what any given workday looks like in my life right now. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and keep your comments and suggestions coming. I love to hear from you. Until next week, I'm Alex. Ciao for now.